A local farmer earned 13,000 gold on his third day in the town using a trusted strategy of min-maxers. Wait, what? How? How, you ask? That is exactly what I'm going to show you now. And do not worry, I got all of you covered. The pros, the soon pros. What? And yes, I even got something for you people. Cause I know not everybody loves fishing as much as my son does. So, for all of you not knowing already, you can get the normal fishing rod at the beach after your first sleep. But don't worry, Old Man Willy will send you a message, so you can't really miss it. I'm a new devil, probably. As soon as you're ready to fish, there are the following steps to follow when you wanna get the best results without deep knowledge. Yes, actually, I'm in you again. So let's get started! Rule number one is a more practical thing since you lack inventory space early on. Just grab a wooden chest early and take it with you. Especially in the first few levels you will end up with a lot of different fishes. With a lot of different quality that will fill your inventory way too quickly. The second rule is the following. Always throw the line as far away from any shore as possible. That means that the bobber landing location is the only thing that matters, while cast range doesn't matter at all. Doing rule 2 correctly rewards you with more rare fishes and better quality. You also will be less likely catching trash, which in return will increase your fishing level much faster. It is by far the most important thing to keep in mind. Rule number 3 is to always go for perfect catches, where you are not allowed to let that little fishy thing leave your green bar. This will reward you with plus 1 quality and a bit more than double experience points for your fishing skill. Except when you are about to miss a treasure chest, which brings us to… Rule number 4. Always hunt those sweet, sweet treasure chests. The safe way to do this is to reel the fish in as much as possible before you try to grab the treasure. The reason you do this is kinda of self-explaining, since those can contain totally game-breaking items for your early game. Just like diamonds, a freaking iridium band, a sword that actually does damage, or a real treasure chest cause the first one was apparently a fake one. At least the real one sells for 5000 gold, which alone is enough to break your early game. On top of those nice gacha game mechanics, it also gives you more fishing experience that multiplies with the perfect catch bonus. So try to align them as often as possible. Rule number 5. Get the next fishing rod as soon as possible and use bait. Seriously, get bait. Buying it from Willy is fine. In fact, it is even recommended. Since bait will cut your waiting time literally in half, so buy your bait right now. Willy! Move out of the newspaper, you aren't supposed to be here. You aren't the fictional character just like the rest of us. Okay. Uh, where we have left off? Oh yeah, bait. Loosely translated, that stands for more money. But how important bait really is will be shown in the execution part. The sixth rule states, in the first spring nothing beats the mountain lake as a fishing location. Except on rainy days, then it is the river because catfish fetches a huge price. But more about this exciting topic later. Stupid day free again. Rule number 7. Only eat high quality fishes that do not sell super high. Prime examples for this rule are the chub or the smallmouth bass. The better the quality, the better the money efficiency. Seaweed and green algae are obviously also good energy supply, cause they are not really worth selling at all. Rule number 8. If you see bubbles close enough, try to abuse them as hard as you can early on, because they will also drastically reduce your wasting time, essentially quadrupling your fish's caught. You could further abuse this with a super early training rod, since this will ensure more easier perfect catches for super fast experience. And why this is of importance will be explained now. Hold on your crown or crap on your chair. Cause for you I will take my rules to the proving grounds. On day one, as soon as I finished creating my character and arrived in the farm, I started chopping down the top of trees for 100 wood and crafted two chests. I stored everything in the chest except for the hoe and the skite and cleared the path down on my farm. Seriously, you guys should take a pickaxe with you since down there are mostly stones. As I went through the forest to search for some forageables to sell, I got a gift from a squirrel. Of course I showed this to my wife who has played hundreds of hours of Stardew Valley with me and she said, 
Wait, there are squirrels? After this huge disappointment, I picked up a lot of free money and food from the ground and expanded my search throughout the whole valley. Checking trash cans also be greatly beneficial for a fancy start, and since nobody likes you. No, I meant the villages in town. But please, please come back. I, I still get the bonus at the end. Since nobody of the Pelican resident likes you at the moment, don't bother if someone is watching you digging through trash. When I finished searching for stuff to sell everywhere, I went back, sold everything that has a decent value, yes, even parsnip seeds, and just kept the food which could be used to clear more trees or stones that could even be sold. But I've been too lazy for that, so I just skipped it and instead went to bed early, which I regretted later on. On day 2 I read the letter, never ever forget to do this before going to the beach, and headed to the beach. After watching a cutscene, I placed the chest right away and started fishing. And here I also forgot that the first fish catch doesn't need to be thrown wide since it's always a guaranteed catch. I seriously always forget this. I also went to Bubbles seeing my future profit just to get trolled by them right away. So I just continued fishing till 4pm to secure fishing level 2. And with level 2 in my pocket I headed straight to Willy and bought the improved fiberglass rod. Some bait and a bit of soup which is optional. If you have trouble reaching level 2 fast enough just go for a training rod as soon as Willy opens. It will make perfect catches way easier. Bait and the fiberglass pole are a must have so get this done before Willy closes at all cost. Then I just continued fishing at the beach till I passed out. Oh yeah, the reason you go for treasure chests? Right here, a freaking diamond worth of 750 gold alone on day 2. Day 3 is... Freaking day 3, seriously, I hate you so much. Normally, fellow farmers, one would love this day since it's always raining and you do not have to water your field. But on this day... On this day... On this day... One can choose between two options. You can either play it safe and go to the mountain lake having a lovely little day of fishing on the lake, which I would recommend to every beginner or casual fisher. Or you can... And the reason you shouldn't do that if you're one of those two here is quite simple. Catfishing is tormenting your very personal being for even trying and daring to attempt to catch them. So instead of torturing yourself, you should rather just join my stream and watch me suffer for you. Because I'm stupid enough to agonize myself all the time again for the sake of content. So I just sold my fishes after getting up. Actually, putting the fishes in my storage would have been better. And went to the river with my beloved companion. The chest. I'll let my character eat a uh, probably cold by now, trout soup to increase our cast distance and green bar size since it is catfish we are talking about. So I fished catfish and ate iridium chub the whole day to sustain my fishing fun even longer. I only failed one fish on this day which actually surprised me a bit. And here another reason for treasure chest being great. At the end of the day I made the mistake to actually go back and sell everything I caught and try to pick up the rest of the stuff without fainting. Which I didn't achieve since I have been too stupid to make my way through the farm I didn't bother to prepare good enough on day one. Despite all of that, I managed to sell all my fish. Got level 5 in fishing which let me pick the angler profession for 25% more money on fishes. And got my money. Wait, something seems fishy. Nah, not you, it is something else. I. I did not get the 25% bonus income? Till this day I believe that the 25% I replied instantly and not showing on numbers, but still gets you the bonus as money because I read it somewhere on the internet. It's always a great idea to do so. Which isn't true cause the overall sum perfectly aligns with what I have in my pockets right now. So if I had just kept all my fish and sold it on day 4 at Willy's house, I would have made 13,000 gold in the first 3 days. Sucks that I suck, I guess. And now back to the information I promised to you guys. I shall now show you how you can easily get fishing level 10 without fishing. And there are two ways I'm aware of, at least. The first one would be fish ponds, where you have to buy the fishes from merchants or find them in Linus Buffet, if you do not want to fish at all. 
Afterwards, you will gain experience for collecting row or completing quests. You also could fish out of your already owned pawns to expand other pawns as well. The second way would be crab traps. Those can be bought from Willy. And you may also collect free pieces for free if you complete the crab trap community center quest by just collecting beach forageables and slaying crabs in the mines. Because they will sometimes drop a crab which is needed to complete the bundle without owning crab traps yourself. All of this because fishing might come in handy someday. And to see how I used my secure and super easy money to explode into mid game without any difficult game knowledge, so I did not have to worry about money ever again. Wait, that is the newspaper from yesterday. What is in the newspaper for today? Same local farmer broke money records while literally sleeping. I will see you there. Bye bye. Mm-hmm.